Hey everyone, welcome back to Static Cardiology here on EMTV. I'll be giving you an ECG rhythm and a scenario. On the bottom of the screen, you'll see a timer for 1 minute and 30 seconds. This time closely resembles the average amount of time you'll want to be spending on each card during an actual National Registry exam. When the time is up, I'll be going over the answer as well as the treatment. Good luck. 3, 2, 1. Now, although this rhythm may look pretty straightforward, it's actually been known to throw off a couple of my students. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at it here and see if we can identify what it is. First thing I like to do whenever I identify rhythm is to count the rate. I'm counting five R waves here, which would mean this has a rate of about 50 BPM. Next thing I'll do is identify the P waves. These are the P waves that I feel most comfortable identifying outright, but on very close inspection here, there are actually a few more that you may not have immediately been aware of. Next thing I'll do is examine my R to R interval. My R to R interval here seems to be inconsistent. I'll then look at the width of the QRS complex. Despite that little slurring notch there near the S wave, this is actually a narrow QRS complex. It measures in at about 0.08, which is well within the boundaries of a normal QRS complex width. So this rhythm looks very confusing. You have an inconsistent R to R interval, which would paint the picture of like a fibrillation. You have a narrow QRS complex, and then you've got these P waves that are just kind of superimposed wherever they want. But because I still am seeing P waves, I'm gonna lean away from saying it's atrial fibrillation and actually more toward a block. Because of this inconsistent PR interval, the fact that there doesn't seem to be any real semblance of association between your P waves and your QRS complexes, this really only means it's one thing. My diagnosis here is actually gonna be a third degree AV block. Now this is definitely not the kind that you would see classically in a textbook because the QRS complexes here are narrow and generally for your textbook third degree heart blocks, you've got a very, very consistent R to R interval. But this gentleman has a sick heart and there is some irregularity here with the conduction of the QRS complexes. And before you ask, is this a fibrillation wave right there and right here? No, this is more likely artifact generated by some kind of um, poor lead placement or someone brushing against the monitor leads as they were capturing this. So no, these are not fibrillation waves. These are just simple artifact. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the scenario. So you're dispatched to a local supermarket for a 64 year old male who has suddenly collapsed. After reaching the patient, he explains that he stood up too quickly while picking up a bag of flour and must have just blacked out. Standing up too quickly and feeling faint or dizzy can be the result of something known as orthostatic hypotension, but his heart rhythm doesn't paint the picture of a simple orthostatic hypotension. Your patient is alert, but he appears pale and has a slow carotid pulse. 
your partner obtains the following vital signs. Blood pressure 73 over 30, pulse 52, respirations 20, SpO2 91% on room air, and a blood sugar of 88. You attach the cardiac monitor and see the rhythm above. Now as the majority of your points in static cardiology are actually scored with correct treatment, you must first identify whether or not this rhythm is stable or unstable so we can proceed down the correct ACLS algorithm. For my unstable criteria, I use the acronym CHAD. And this of course stands for cardiac insufficiency, hypotension, alteration of mental status, and dyspnea. Now based on my patient's current vital signs as well as his physical presentation and his story, my final diagnosis for static cardiology, is going to be an unstable third degree AV block. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the treatment. Just like with all my static cards, I'll begin treatment by regurgitating the mantra, scene safe, BSI, IVO2 monitor. Because this patient is bradycardic, I'll then consider administering atropine, one milligram IV push, and I can repeat this up to three times. But because my patient is unstable, and as the saying goes, unstable gets the cables, I'm going to go ahead and attach the pads, consider sedation of course because this gentleman is awake, light sedation here like a little bit of midazolam, one or two milligrams, mixed with a little bit of fentanyl, 25 to 50 micrograms, usually will do the trick. Or if all else fails, ketamine is good for this too. Because my patient is unstable and bradycardic, I'll go ahead and place the pads and turn on the pacer. I'll select my rate, anywhere between 60 and 100 pulses per minute, and then I'll increase my current until I see electrical capture. I'll then check a carotid pulse to assure mechanical capture, and then to make sure I don't lose that capture during transport, I'll go ahead and increase my current 10 milliamps more. I could then consider the administration of vasopressors for additional blood pressure management if needed. And then finally, rapid transport. And that's it. If you like this video, please make sure to subscribe to my channel for more. And be sure to check out Static Pharmacology, a new segment I've been doing about pharmacological management of patients with very similar style scenarios. And remember, if you found this video helpful, feel free and make your own playlists using my static cardiology videos to help you study for your national registry exams. Until I see you next, have a good rest of your night.